Welcome to open air baseball for the first time this season at Rogers Center. The Boston Red Sox are in town under the guidance of John Fair on their manager. It's 29 degrees on a perfect night for baseball. And the Blue Jay players, I know this, they've been waiting for this night a long time. Open air baseball, and it feels like baseball weather for sure. Time now to take a look at the Boston Red Sox lineup. Boston hitting 296 as a team, and a guy that has a lot to do with that. Xander Bogarts leading the league with a 347 average. He got a 19 game hit streak, hitting nearly 400 over those 19 games with 10 extra base hits and 13 RBIs. And how about Jackie Bradley Jr.? He just had his 29 game hit streak snapped last night over his last 30 games. He's hit 400, 44 hits and 110 at bats with 20 extra base hits. Jackie Bradley Jr. and the Red Sox are red hot. Good test for Aaron Sanchez. Yeah, it really is. There's a lot of threes that began that they started those batting averages for Aaron Sanchez to deal with. Originally scheduled to start on Thursday, had this start pushed back to today to give him an extra day. Last pitched one week ago against the Twins, and he was outstanding, running his record to four and one in that game. Seven innings, two runs. He had seven strikeouts against Minnesota. First pitch of the game is up for a ball, and we are underway. Says Mookie Betts, their fine young right fielder. That's batting 275 for the season, and he's got some pop. Ground ball, big hop for Tulowitzki. One down. Well, good to have Tulowitzki back at shortstop. Let's take a look at the rest of the Blue Jays, how they line up defensively tonight. In left field, Michael Saunders, Kevin Pillar's in center, and with Jose Bautista serving his one game suspension, Carreras in right. Donaldson and Tulowitzki on the left side, Travis and Smoke on the right side, and Russell Martin. Flashing the signs for Aaron Sanchez tonight. Troy Tulowitzki left Tuesday's game with that right quad problem. He was out running around early today. He was making sure that he could stop and start and cut. And he says, I'm ready to go. And it's very comforting to have his glove back out at shortstop. Well, especially with the absence of Jose Bautista for one night. This is Dustin Pedroia. He takes his strike. Pedroia's got a 20 game hit streak against the Blue Jays. They can't get him out. We've been seeing so many hit streaks lately by the Boston <laughs> Red Sox. Everybody has been hitting for this team. You have to be on your game, especially in the first inning. They come out swinging the sticks from the first pitch. They have scored 51 runs in the first inning more than anybody else in baseball. Top of the order is always tough, and that's a trend we're seeing around baseball. Jose Bautista has been leading off lately. Xander Bogarts, the 347 average behind Pedroia. I, I asked one of the uh, staff for the Boston Red Sox today, I said, why are you so good in the first inning? And he said, you see that line down there, down the left field line, and then that line down the right field line? Our first three guys hit him between those lines anywhere. And the whole key is to get David Ortiz up there because he always seems to do something special in the first inning. 3-2 to Pedroia. Nice play by Smoke. The big first baseman, he's got great hands. He made an easy play of that hot shot off the bat of Pedro, two ground ball outs here in the first. Well, another reason why it's so comforting to have Tulowitzki at shortstop. Aaron Sanchez, when he is on and his sinker is dive bombing, he's going to get a lot of ground ball out. So your inner defense has got to be good. So far, two for two. Two ground ball outs. Here is the leading hitter in the American League, Xander Bogarts. What a fine young player Bogarts has turned into. Ah. Bogart since the start of 2015 leads the majors with 263 hits. 263 hits. <laughs> That's a career for some people. Boy, it sure is. Here we are <laughs> in the 27th of May, and everybody knows 200 hits in a season is a great year. And he's got 263. Well, that's a good curveball. He introduces very early. That has been a pitch for Aaron that is really starting to come along. When you talk to him about that curveball, he feels like it's one of his best pitches, and he's not afraid to throw it at any time. Bogarts gets on top of that and fouls it out of play. Extra days rest for Sanchez. That's a good thing. And the Blue Jays have said all along that whenever they have a chance to back him off, maybe take him out of a game with a big lead. 
skip him because of an off day they're going to do it protect that arm protect those innings because they've got a very valuable commodity in Aaron Sanchez one and two fouled off Russell Martin's chest protector that ball was fouled off tipped his glove and then hit him in the chest when woke up the home plate umpire made sure that Russell was OK before we continue. Three down as Sanchez sets down the red hot Red Sox in order. Joe Kelly will take the mound when we come back to. Start tonight, three up, three down with a strikeout. Now it's over to the Boo Jay hitters. They had a good road trip as far as getting key hits. They went five and two on the seven game road trip. Still trying to get to 500, 24 and 25. Josh Donaldson. He knows all about Joe Kelly. He is nine for 17 against the hard throwing right hander with a homer and six RBIs. And right behind him, the winning Connachon has gotten off to a real good start against Boston this season. 10 hits in 28 at bats. He's got a double pair of home runs and he's driven home seven. The harder they throw it, the better the Blue Jays like it. And Joe Kelly can really throw. He had been on the disabled list with a right shoulder impingement since April the 20th, came off and threw six and two thirds innings of no hit ball against Cleveland. He's won 10 consecutive decisions. He won eight straight starts from last August through September. That's the longest winning streak by a Red Sox pitcher since Pedro. Martinez won nine straight in 1999. Ezequiel Carrera, the right fielder, filling in for Jose Bautista in the leadoff spot. John Gibbons will do this often. If a player is out of the lineup, one of his regulars, he'll just put the substitute right in the same spot in the order. Doesn't want to mess with everybody else in the lineup. Just let them get comfortable. The Blue Jays have been finally swinging the bats like we know they can. There's no time to be messing with that lineup with Jose out. Carrera over his last 21 games has done a nice job coming off the bench getting some big hits including a four hit game. It's his first time he has faced Joe Kelly trying to get a feel for the movement and velocity. Well he's got a great arm. Fastballs exploding and we we're talking about that in the opening the problems he had against the Blue Jays when he gave up six runs in four innings. The first three innings of that game he was outstanding. That's a pretty good pitch. Challenge for the home plate umpire Quinn Wolcott because that catcher Christian Vasquez scooted inside and there wasn't much of a window for Wolcott to have a good eye at that strike zone. Nice little comeback two seam fastball that time by Kelly. Big hop for Bogarts. One down. Well the Red Sox they can hit but they've also got some pretty good defensive players and most of them are homegrown. Blake Swihart a former catcher now playing in left field. Jackie Bradley Jr. in center and Mookie Betts with a strong arm in right. Marco Hernandez starts at third. Bogarts and Pedroia up the middle. Travis Shaw has played third base most of the season and now Christian Vasquez 
terrific young catcher behind the plate for Joe Kelly. Another homegrown player. This is the first time that he will be catching Joe Kelly. Those duties usually go to Ryan Hannigan, but Hannigan left Wednesday's game with an injury. Still feeling the effects of that, so Christian Vasquez gets the start tonight. Saw Hannigan catching the knuckleballer Stephen Wright today in the bullpen, so indications are that he is on the mend and will get back in there soon. Probably see him at one point in this three game series, given the fact that Saturday and Sunday are both day games. Mm -hmm. Probably tomorrow. Josh Donaldson drives one deep to right center. Get up, ball, get up, and gone! You know it was Josh Donaldson who delivered the decisive blow the last time these two met. Joe Kelly and Josh Donaldson hit a first pitch slider for a grand slam home run that knocked out Kelly in that game back on April the 8th. He doesn't waste any time again tonight. The whole idea for the Blue Jays tonight the game plan against Kelly because he's got such a good arm. Get that fastball down. Connachon goes after that first pitch and grounds out to the third baseman. Watch where this pitch is to Donaldson. He's got enough fastball. He's hit 88 or 89 miles an hour, 99 miles an hour, but if you get the fastball down, you can reach it. This time Josh goes Josh right Donaldson. down, and gets that fastball, drives it out of here. One nothing. Joe Kelly has seen that before. Second home run for Donaldson against Kelly. That's his 10th hit in 18 at bats against Kelly. This is Michael Saunders. Michael batting cleanup. And the lineup, of course, with Bautista at the top of the order, has been constructed very effectively in my mind, the way they've been able to spread out the left handed and right handed hitters in this lineup. You know when the season started everybody was saying well the Blue Jays are too top heavy with the right handed batters. That was before the emergence of Michael Saunders. They weren't really sure what they were going to get with him and then Justin Smoke is going to be playing every day because of the PED suspension to Chris Colabella. So there's another left handed batter that you can stick in there. The lineup. Gives it just a little bit more balance. Saunders had a home run on Wednesday in New York. Off Jason Shreve. A 3 2 breaking ball he hit for a two run home run. Part of two home runs hit in the same inning. He and Russell Martin hit home runs in that seventh inning. He hit it so hard and so far he sent Jason Shreve to the DL <laughs> because of it. <laughs> Boy, he has looked good this year. He's had some great at bats. He's in the top 10. In Major League Baseball, Michael Saunders is. It's seeing pitches per plate appearance. Off speed pitch and Kelly gets the strike out but the Blue Jays strike first tonight. Josh Donaldson starting to really swing it feeling better with every day. This home run to right center number 12 on the season gives the Blue Jays a one nothing lead.
there, you know, for the first time since joining the Blue Jays, Troy Tulowitzki will be working with Devin Travis as his new double play partner. Now, I caught up with him earlier today and asked him about the process in getting to know a new DP partner. And he told me that over his 11-year big league career, he's worked with many second basemen. He's confident that he and Travis will make the transition and quickly. He said Travis is a great player, defender, and addition to the lineup. The good news is that they did communicate and work together in the backfields there in Dunedin at camp. They talked about where they like the ball over the bag as well as positioning. But Tulo said at the end of the day, you know, you don't really know how well you'll work together until you get into real game situations. Buck, he said you got to learn on the fly. Absolutely. When you get out there at game speed, of course, Ryan Goins and Tulowitzki played very well as a double play combination. And now it's going to be Devin Travis with Tulo. This is Travis Shaw playing first base tonight. Another one of these fine young homegrown Red Sox. 299 for the season. Good fastball at 95. The last time Sanchez faced the Red Sox earlier in the season, he allowed just two hits over seven innings at Fenway. One run. That was back on in April. Blue Jays won that game. But I'll tell you, if he's got the curveball like we have seen so far early in this ball game, he's going to be tough to beat. See his numbers in 11 career games against the Red Sox. This is his fourth career start against them. Spoke to Russell about Sanchez and how they've kind of eliminated the cutter now because his curveball has come along so well they can use that. You can see all the numbers they're way down. The curveball just missed uh, his pitch usage the cutter. You're right. They've almost eliminated it. It's under 1% if, if that's possible this year because his curveball so good and his changeup is coming along. What he can do with his fastball if he can go inside and outside with that fastball. That's like adding another pitch. Well, he can throw it down. That's where he's most effective. Then throw it to both sides of the plate and then elevate it every once in a while. And you're talking with one pitch, having three ways to get you out. 96 fouled straight back by Shaw. Aaron is pitching with total confidence. He really feels good about his pitches. He's worked hard to get to this point. He earned the spot in the rotation. With a good spring. When you talk to him, the confidence just oozes out of him. And you talk to him, and he sounds like a starting pitcher. Ah, I didn't have it there, or I was trying to do this there, and in between work, you know, all of that. That if you're around the game long enough, you start listening to these guys, they sound like starters. And he sounds like one. To Lewiski takes the short hop. High throw and gets away from Smoke. Shaw is headed for second. We haven't seen that from Tulowitzki. He is generally extremely accurate with his throws, and that ball took off on him and went off the glove of Smoke. Didn't make an error for the longest time and then had a bunch of them. This time he sets himself and the ball takes off. Justin Smoke is six foot four. And an outstanding glove over there at first base, but that time he just could not come up with that throw. It's the seventh error for Tulowitzki. Now the ground ball, and it looked like a routine ground ball out, turns into a base runner at second with nobody out. Hanley Ramirez now. Ramirez has gotten off to a good start, 297 average. And who hasn't in this Red Sox lineup? As a team, they're hitting 296. Ground ball to the right side. Smoke will go to the back. Hanley Ramirez does his job. There's a lot of Red Sox playing team baseball right now, and Ramirez hit the ground ball to the right side. Boy, he really fought off that fastball right in on his hands, but his job was to get that runner over to third base. And that's another thing. That's one of the reasons why they lead Major League Baseball in run score, because they play good fundamental baseball offensively. Hanley Ramirez, he's been around long enough. And you look, everybody on the bench acknowledges that good at bat. And when your star players like Ramirez do that, everybody else has to follow suit. 
So Blue Jays are going to play the infield in. One out. Shaw at third. Jackie Bradley Jr. fresh off that 29 game hit streak batting 341. Over those 29 games he had 20 extra base hits and drove in 30 runs. So it wasn't like he was just slapping the ball to left field. We saw a little bit of this from Jackie Bradley Jr. last year at the end of the season. Remember that series we had against the Red Sox in Boston? He had a huge series. Driving the ball the other way, pulling it when he had to. Just a little bit of a glimpse, and then he went into a little bit of a slump. Chili Davis, the hitting coach for the Red Sox, believes it was just the length of the season that caught up to him last year. And had a chance to play a full six month season. And after that hot streak, he really had a tailspin. And Chili felt like it was more fatigue and the extra season that young players aren't necessarily used to. One and two, one out. Lays off that high fastball. Well, he's been able to hit everything now. Remember when he first came up? Jackie Bradley was swinging at everything. You throw it inside, he'd swing at it. Up and away, he'd swing at it. He's closing off those holes in his swing. Starting to hit the ball all over the, the baseball diamond. Pass ball to Travis. He was there, but knocked it down. And Bradley Jr. will pick up an RBI. And the game is tied at one. For Jackie Bradley Jr., RBI number 35. And Sanchez got another ground ball. Right at Devin Travis and that ball was hit hard by Bradley. And that's the thing about the Red Sox. They said you know if we can get a runner at second base to start the inning. Move him over. That's a start offensively. You pick up a run here. You pick up a run there. You scratch out a couple of here and there. And the next thing you know you got six seven eight runs on the board. It says Marco Hernandez who is playing third base tonight. He goes after the first pitch. Hernandez had one of the two hits that Sanchez allowed when he started back in April against Boston. Rookie Betts had the other. That was his first major league hit, wasn't it? Yes. Curveball that lays off. Comes right back with the curveball, and it's a strike. Hanny Ramirez talking to Jackie Bradley Jr. If I give myself up, you better get that runner in. And he did. <laughs> you owe me half of that RBI. <laughs> <laughs> Sanchez will take the little chopper throw to first, and the inning is over. But the Red Sox get an unearned run. Seventh there of the season. It's a 1 1 game.
Bacardi Blue Jays for a Day contest for a chance to win a great Blue Jays on-field experience. For details, entry form, and rules, visit bluejays.com slash Bacardi contest. Now remember, the contest closes Thursday, June 30th at 4.59 p.m. Buck. Thank you very much, Hazel May. Good crowd on hand. It's supposed to be a good crowd all weekend long. Josh Donaldson having a chat with the Marlowe Hale. He's always into the game. He's talking about some aspect of the game, whether it's in the field or at the plate. Might have been talking about that ground ball to Devin Travis. Looked like they were mimicking the fielding motion. This is Troy Tulowitzki back in the lineup after missing the final two games in New York. Isn't that what baseball players do? They talk, talk about baseball. baseball? <laughs> <laughs> and Josh Donaldson is a baseball player. He loves to talk about hitting any aspect of the game. His hitting coach while he was in Oakland was Chili Davis. And hitting Chili Davis talked a lot about hitting. I spoke to Chili about Josh and he said Josh really understands his swing. But when we were both together I always told him when you hit him they're going to go out. Don't tell me you didn't hit it. I know when you hit it. He said you get good sound. There's a cutter that catches the outside corner. Don't all good hitters know their swing. They should. Good sw yeah. good hitters. They might need coaching to become the type of hitter that they are. But after that they know their swing better than anybody. This is one of them right here. I think Troy Tulowitzki he knows himself better than anybody. He's been doing it long enough. 11 years and Tulowitzki has a five game hit streak. Fastball got away from Joe Kelly up to 97. But with little effect. Justin Smoke on deck. 3 2 to Tulowitzki leaning off the bottom of the second in this 1 1 game. Out right on the outside corner, a little movement back over the. Outer edge of the plate, and Tulowitzki is caught looking at strike three. You know, one of the things that Joe Kelly was talking about after his last start, that six and two thirds no hit did against Cleveland, was his fastball command. He was able to use that fastball to both sides of the plate. That time, that two seamer came right back on the outside corner, freezing Tulowitzki. He's got outstanding stuff. He's got a great fastball, upper 90, but he hasn't been able to command it. Switch hitter Justin Smoke, the first baseman. Boy, isn't that true? Anytime you hear a pitcher talk about a great game, first thing you hear is, well, I could locate my fastball tonight, whether it's 98 or 88. And if you can pitch like that, down and away, up and in, inside, outside, all of that, and then change speeds with it, that, then you're going to have really good games. He also talked in the context of the last start that he pitched here on April the 8th. Those first three innings he was dealing against the Blue Jays and then everything fell apart and he said I lost my feel for my slider especially when I got it in the stretch position and then I couldn't command the fastball. That was his first start of the season and he would make two more starts and then go on a disabled list with a shoulder impingement and missed over a month was activated on the 21st and that great start at home against Cleveland. He had a great finish to 2015. He had a great spring so that was a little bit of a letdown. Curveball for the strikeout three strikeouts in a row for Joe Kelly doing it with his fastball the curveball the slider. Let's take a look at the scouting report for the right hander Joe Kelly this season. There are the percentages of pitches that he'll use a fastball 60 percent of the time and it averages 95 miles an hour. We've seen some 98 some 99s for him. he has the combination slider curveball outstanding stuff and if you look at the numbers against that slider it's almost unhittable batters are hitting 077 against his slider this year. Russell Martin. That two homer game on Wednesday. He and Michael Saunders homering in the seventh inning. First time in baseball history. Two Canadian teammates homered in the same inning. And he came back yesterday against CC Sabathia who was terrific. 
Nessa went 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts. He struck out against a as Chapman in the ninth. The Blue Jays were able to pick up a big insurance run off Chapman. Russell's got a new bat order in. Some smaller bats. About a half an inch shorter and about a half an ounce lighter. It says it feels good. It feels like I can get the bat where I want to now. The other ones, it was a little bit too heavy and a little bit too long, and he wasn't being able to hit the ball where he wants to. Russell's had a good run so far against Boston this season, hitting an even 300. Order some more bats. Russell Martin with a base hit to right. A two out single. You know, on top of that, he's also made a couple of adjustments with his arms. He said in Los Angeles, I was getting my hands back a little bit earlier. Look where his hands are now. They're back. They're not up against his body. He says he can free himself up and hit the ball to right field right there. Maybe he's going to start hitting the way we saw him last year when he had a career year. That ninth inning against her oldest Chapman. Blue Jays should patent that inning and take it with them the rest of the season. Smoke had a base hit to right. Villar had a base hit to right. Devin Travis had an RBI single to right. A lot of hits over there. There's a lot of hits to right field, especially if you can make that pitcher get that ball down. Two outs. Here is Devin Travis. Picked up his first RBI of the season yesterday afternoon. That's Devin's first approach right field and he takes care of that first and then if the ball is slower or it's inside then he'll work it around toward the left field line. They were asking John Gibbons today do you see Devin Travis as your leadoff hitter in the future he says I don't want to put that pressure on him right now he, he just got back up to the big legs just leave him alone right now let's see what happens. But that approach that you were just talking about certainly looks like he could be a, the type of leadoff hitter the Blue Jays need. I, I agree with Gibby. I think you just leave him alone. Let him get at bats under his belt. Let him get 100 at bats under his belt. That's right. And if you still have the need. That's right. Then you make an adjustment. That would be putting a lot of pressure on a young kid just coming off of injury. Oh and two. Base hit to right. Devin Travis got an 0-2 pitch, goes to right field. Super Slow Mo Cam. Brought to you by Rogers 4K TV. Get closer to the action with four times the resolution of HD alone. Good crowd on hand, and it's supposed to be a packed house for all three games against Boston over the weekend. Well, Kevin Pilar, he had that base hit against Chapman to right field. It plays against everyone, especially the hard throwers. Helps you to stay on the ball just a little bit longer. Easier to get to that fastball when it's down than when it's up. That pitch looked a lot worse than it was because of where the catcher was set up. It had quite a bit of the plate. He had slid to the inside. Christian Vasquez did and had to reach back over the outside part of the plate to haul it back in. A tough run for Kevin so far with runners in scoring position hitting just 182. The infield is straight away for Pilar. One thing you don't see very often. Everybody's in their normal position. <laughs> Maybe he saw that at bat against uh, Aroldis Chapman when he hit the ball to right field. A couple of former Blue Jays, of course, John Farrell, the manager, Brian Butterfield, the third base coach for the Boston Red Sox. Kelly was headed toward the dugout. Lars said, "Not so fast." 96. He thought it was strike three. Took a couple of quick steps toward the dugout. Thought it was strike three. Thought he had him. 
Looks like Pilar is looking for some type of breaking ball and all they're feeding him is fastballs. Fouls that fastball off. Pitch number five off the plate inside. Now Vasquez out to the mound. Saying, okay, when do you want to go to a breaking ball here? If you throw it out of the strike zone on a 2 2 count, I think we can get them for the strikeout. Russell Martin had a single to right with two outs. Devin Travis backed that up with a single of his own. Vasquez wanted that pitch, and now you can see the umpire, Quinn Wolcott, indicating it was outside to the Red Sox dugout. Three, two, two outs. The runners will be off on the pitch. Carrera will bat if Pilar can keep the inning alive. Well, that, that'll help that the runners can get a, a running start here. Three and two. The outfielders for the Red Sox can really throw, especially the guy in center field. Jackie Bradley Jr. has got an outstanding arm. There go the runners. And Pilar chases a pitch off the plate outside for the strikeout. Joe Kelly. Strikes out the side in the second. Blue Jays strand a pair of base hits. James Hinchcliffe takes on fellow Canadian Alex Tagliani in a field of greats from the full position at the historic Brickyard. Don't miss the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500 Sunday on Sportsnet 360 and City plus stream live on Sportsnet now and but we wish James all the best. Absolutely we do. It'll be a great opportunity to watch the 100th running of the Indy 500. Aaron Sanchez. He has given up a run, an unearned run. He hasn't allowed a hit yet through two innings. And he has kept the ball on the ground, Pat. Had a strikeout. Everything else has been on the ground. That's when you know that that sinking fastball, two seamer, is working for Aaron. This is the catcher, Christian Vasquez. There's another pitch. Looked like it was a strike. Make note of that. Very small strike zone tonight. Hitters will take advantage of that. Both the Blue Jays and the Red Sox, very patient hitters. Now the ground ball, Vasquez grounds out to second. Well, the Blue Jays went five and two on a seven game road trip, four games in Minnesota, and three games in New York, and they got terrific starting pitching throughout the seven games. When you look at the numbers for the Blue Jays on the road trip, Pat. You can't ask for better starting pitching. That road trip was built on that starting staff. Look at the whip under one. That's one less than one base runner inning. They went deep into the game, seven and a third innings. That's what they averaged on, on the road trip. 
everybody took their turns and it was really interesting because the last time through the rotation they weren't very good it's like they were catching their breath and then they caught fire on the trip yeah the previous trip through the rotation they all had a rough start and then Marco Estrada started in Minnesota with a terrific outing he went eight innings allowed three hits end up with a no decision the Blue Jays won that one in extra innings. This has popped up Donaldson with a long run he's got room and can't quite get there. Blake Swihart the left fielder popped it up Donaldson thought he had a beat on it but got too close to that warning truck and just couldn't make a play. He's very wary of that wall down the left field line. He knows he's going to have to slide feet first so his feet could take the brunt of that wall. And then just gives up and crashes into the wall. Two and one to Blake Swihart, who's a switch hitter. Another pop out of play. To give you an idea how dominant the starting pitching was on that last road trip, Sanchez gave up eight hits in seven innings in his start in Minnesota, game two of the seven games. The next highest hit total was in New York. Five hits over six and two thirds. Another good curveball. Second strikeout of the game. In one of the games that they lost on that road trip was the Jay Happ start. Remember how well Jay pitched? He pitched into the eighth inning in Minnesota. Gave up three runs. There's the curveball. Watch how he spins this thing. And the bite on that curveball fools Slyhart. Well, remember a few years ago, well, probably 20 years ago now, they used to talk about, well, the curveball is a optical illusion. <laughs> <laughs> Try standing up there hitting it. That's yeah. no optical <laughs> illusion. It'll buckle your knees. Mookie Betts makes a pitch off the plate, a ball on the strike. This guy can hit right here. Last year, 60 extra base hits. For Mookie Betts. He got off to a rough start, but finished strong. Donaldson, fair ball, long throw in time. Another ground ball off for Aaron Sanchez. Good play at third. Nice scoop over at first. No problem in the third. Comfy green chairs in the TD Comfort Zone are guests of TD. While over in the Jays Care Community Clubhouse are folks from Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Halton. A warm welcome to all. Welcome to Rogers Center. If you come to this ballpark and have a chance to get to that Jays Care Community Clubhouse, great vantage point. They do a terrific job. DeMarlo Hale checking in with. Ryan Goins and probably talking a little bit about defending against some of these Red Sox players. Devin Travis, of course, just fresh back from the minor leagues. Maybe getting some extra information. Rivera shows bunt, pulls the bat back. 
Trying to pick on the third baseman. That's Marco Hernandez tonight. Marco Hernandez making his first career start at third base. So why not? Test him early. Line drive in the left and that's going to be played on a hop. A lead off single for Carrera. Man aboard nobody on this check in with Jamie Campbell. Urias 19 years old and it's kind of curious they chose Friday night in New York against the Mets. I mean that's a tough assignment for anybody let alone a rookie making his major league debut. Couldn't have been against uh, the Atlanta Braves. Milwaukee on a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Friday in New York versus Jacob DeGrom. Yeah. Good luck with that. Donaldson another ball. This ball's going to get down. Carreras around second. He's getting the wave around third and Donaldson has driven in the go ahead run. Josh Donaldson two great swings against Joe Kelly. And early in the count Josh was saying that he just hasn't felt right all season long. Well maybe he's starting to feel right after these two at bats. He homered his first time up the right field. This time fastball up and in and he lets that ball travel that looked like his swing in batting practice today. He was trying to go back through the middle trying to go the other way. That is with authority to right field. And once you start getting that down keeps you on the ball just a little bit longer. He scores Carrera from first base with the tie breaking run. Donaldson now 11 for 19 against Joe Kelly. He hit his 12th double to go along with his 12th home run back in the first. Edwin Encarnacion grounded out hard to third base his first time up. Well, he got that pitch way inside. You see how far off the plate it was. You know the thing with Joe Kelly you got to make him throw that fastball down. It, it looks so tempting and it looks like you can hit it nine miles. But with the movement and the speed that he throws it if you get it down your eyes will track it and you can have an actually a better swing. You have to be patient with them and discipline and make him get that ball down. Ground ball, Donaldson will head to third and kind of showing a productive hit back. Well, the Blue Jays using a good approach here tonight against a hard thrower. You see Donaldson applauding the effort by Encarnacion. Well, you asked him to keep that approach like they had against a roll as Chapman by going the other way. Look what the right handers are doing against Joe Kelly. Make sure he gets the ball down and then maybe shoot that ball to right field. Zico Carrera goes the other way also. Every one of the hits the Blue Jays have had tonight so far has been the other way. That tells me they're staying on the ball and they're seeing the ball. Donaldson checking out the infield now. They're drawn in with one out. Michael Saunders at the plate. Off the plate inside. Saunders struck out on a Kelly changeup to end the first. Kelly has four strikeouts. Blue Jays have a 2 1 lead. We'll keep an eye on Josh Donaldson down at third base. He'll tell you if he's going to go on contact. Pitchers have been pounding Saunders inside. We saw that from CC Sabathia yesterday. Pumps up for a little two seamer right here. Rushes back Michael Saunders. All you have to do is just get it started just a little bit more. They are now playing three infielders on the right side of the infield after that last pitch. Really interesting alignment here is Bogart's the shortstop. He's a little deeper than Pedroia. Brian Butterfield is the guy that 
is in charge of the infield defense. Inside and Saunders takes the walk. It's first and third for Troy Tulowitzki. Tulowitzki is 0 for 7 against Joe Kelly after his strikeout in the second. I would imagine Tulowitzki is going to be very aggressive on this first on pitch. The first pitch. He, he didn't want to have anything to do with Michael Saunders. That was an intentional unintentional walk for me and that first pitch is I think going to be one for Tulowitzki. Stay aggressive right here. Boy it looked like it was right in his hitting zone. First pitch strike one out runners at the corners. He went around pitch inside. I know I say this a lot. But this is another situation where the new slide rule at second has taken the intrigue and excitement out of this inning. You're in a one run game. You got a runner at third. Good runner at first. You say OK break up two. Can't do that anymore. Can't do it. Could be the difference between a win and a loss. Big run. Oh two pitch. Strike three call. Tulowitzki, you see the third pitch looked like it was on the plate. Tulowitzki caught looking for a second time. But here's his argument. He's standing out at shortstop, Tulowitzki, and he's seeing the same pitch thrown by Aaron Sanchez called a ball. So he says, well, that must be a ball tonight. But unfortunately for Tulowitzki in this at bat with a runner at third base and less than two outs that's called a strike. That's what he's upset about the inconsistencies. Justin Smoke now trying to pick up Troy Tulowitzki. Smoke struck out on a curveball in this second. Two down now. Came right back with a first pitch curveball. Blue Jays have a 2 1 lead. Boston in first place, 29 and 18, two games ahead of the second place Orioles. The Blue Jays are 24 and 25. They're currently in third place, a half game ahead of the Yankees. Battling to get to 500 and then stay at 500 and go beyond it. Breaking ball is fouled off by Smoke. That is a big run at third base. Blue Jays could try anything here. You got a strikeout pitcher on the mound in Kelly. We haven't seen too many double steals by the Blue Jays this year, have we? No, not at all, but you're talking about one of the best throwing catchers in all of baseball in Christian Vasquez. Well it works for Donaldson because he can get off the of third base as far as he wants with the left hander at the plate. There goes Saunders swing and a miss that'll end the inning. But the Blue Jays take the lead 2 1. Josh Donaldson has driven in both runs and here comes the ultimate cleanup crew brought to you by Home Hardware's exclusive line of the ultimate hard hitting and tough on grime cleaning products.
Live on your phone and tablet with the MLB.com at bat app. Customize at bat to feature your Blue Jays and stay up to the moment at any moment with scores, news, live game video highlights, and much more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Good crowd on hand here tonight at Rogers Center first open air baseball game of the season and it feels great to be outdoors once again. Dustin Bajoy, Xander Bogarts and Travis Shaw for the Red Sox Blue Jays have a 2 1 lead. Feels like summertime doesn't it. Oh, it's great. Surely baseball weather. 27th of May open air baseball good crowd on hand and the Red Sox are in town. Whoops. He held on to that curveball a little bit too long. Yeah, I, I'm going to throw a perfect one. You know, that's a thing that, that Aaron says. He loves his curveball. At times, though, he throws it from behind him. He has to concentrate, he said, at throwing the ball out in front and just letting it go. When I try to be too cute with it or I try to be too fine, he says, that's when I bounce it. That's when I really yank it out of the strike zone. Two and one to Pedroia. Boy, there's a lot of movement in that fastball. Came all the way back and caught the outside corner. Pete Walker has to be thrilled with his starting pitchers. They have really done a terrific job all season long. Blue Jays lead the majors in innings pitched from their starters. That's a better curveball. Well, Xander Bogarts has more hits than anybody in baseball since the start of 2015. He's a pretty good hitter, Pat. <laughs> He's a pretty good hitter, and if you want to gauge the type of curveball that Sanchez has, just check out check out this reaction after the strikeout to Xander Bogarts in the first inning. Yeesh, that's a good curveball. <laughs> has more hits than anybody in baseball, and he was impressed with that. Curveball. I'm not so impressed with that fastball. He gets the first hit of Sanchez. Base hit up the middle. Twenty game hit streak for Xander Bogarts. How about that? The first one of the night. Takes this pitch right under the legs of Sanchez, right over the bag at second base, and that extends his major league leading hit streak. Travis Shaw, the first baseman. He's gotten off to a great start to his Red Sox career. Kind of came out of nowhere. I know they knew he was a good hitting prospect, but boy, to step in and play every day at third the way he has and produce. He's a good athlete. He's a big guy. He's about six foot three, but he's got very soft hands. He can play first and he can play third. He's just taking advantage of the opportunity afforded him with the injury to Pablo Sandoval. Hit 13 home runs last year in limited time, and Sandoval went on the disabled list. He won the job in spring training at third base. Base hit to left field. Bogarts is making the turn. He's going to challenge Sanders. Here's the throw, and now Shaw moves into second. That's not a good throw by Sanders with one out. You got to play the percentages in this one run game. Unless you're 100 percent sure you can throw the runner out you got to keep the double play in order especially with Sanchez who throws so many ground balls. You're absolutely right but Bogart's made this play. He had his mind made up that he was going to go first and third on Michael Saunders. The throw was a little bit offline. It was low but there was no way that Tulowitzki could have cut that ball off in the heads up play by Shaw Travis Shaw. Gets himself into scoring position. So now, instead of being in a double play situation, Hanley Ramirez has runners at second and third with one out. Being a good offensive team where you lead the league in all these categories hits and runs and batting average, it's not just hitting. First pitch base hit. They're going to stop Shaw as Bogarts comes in to tie it up. So Hanley Ramirez gets rewarded for his good team at bat the first time up 
and comes up with an RBI single his second time up. First curveball that he saw tonight. This one stays up and a good RBI guy like Haley Ramirez has been over his career. He's DHing tonight. Drives in the second run for the Red Sox. But good offensive skills, not just hitting. You got to run the base as well. You have to have good at bats. Play good team offense. Well, the Red Sox are hitting like the Blue Jays did last year. Yes. From top to bottom. Everybody's hitting everything. They're playing good fundamental baseball. Jackie Bradley Jr. picked up an RBI with a ground ball to second his first time up. RBI number 35 for the Red Sox center fielder. He was the benefactor of that great at bat by Hannah Ramirez last time up. Two and oh. One down the Red Sox have tied it up. The Red Sox have three hitters in the top five positions in the batting average race in the American League. Bogarts Bradley and David Ortiz first second and fifth. He's been clutch as well batting three ninety five in these situations. Three and zero. Oh. Ball four. All right, you talk about the Red Sox, and we mentioned they hit 296 this season coming into this game as a team, and they have scored 278 runs. That's a lot of runs. You're going to, if you have any deficiencies in your pitching staff, that'll paper over a lot of those. They lead in extra base hits in the major leagues. And, and here's a stat that the Blue Jays were really good in last year. They lead the major leagues in doubles. Remember the Blue Jays always seem like they're coming up with extra base hits doubles last year where there's always a guy in scoring position. The Red Sox coming into this game. 121 doubles already this year. Amazing. So Pete Walker with a quick visit. And I got to tell you, I got to go back to that curveball that Sanchez bounced in the Pedroia at bat. Kind of threw him out of whack. He went ahead and struck out Pedroia, but then he's given up three singles and a walk since then. And he's just a little out of sync right now. And it looks like he's trying to muscle his way out of trouble right here. And, and this is just where a young pitcher has to just take a deep breath and just try easy. You know what I mean? Don't don't muscle your way through. You start overthrowing and the ball goes all over the place. This is where you just have to just relax and just let it come to you. This is Marco Hernandez, the third baseman. Hernandez was acquired by the Red Sox from the Chicago Cubs for Felix Dubron. In 2014. Ball on the strike. You know what you have to keep telling yourself if you're Aaron Sanchez. I'm just one pitch away. If I make my pitch I'm one pitch away of getting out of this inning. He'll throw a ton of ground balls. You don't need a strikeout right now. You need a ground ball. Bases loaded. A run in. All three hits Sanchez has given up have come in this inning. Down the left side and out of play. Hernandez is 23 years old. This is his second full season in the Red Sox organization his first year in the big leagues. Lines and Donaldson. Second double play. What a play by Josh Donaldson. Doing a little bit of everything tonight. 
Hernandez hit it on the line, a low liner. And Donaldson gloved it, took a quick look at second, and made a strong throw. Hanley Ramirez, that extra hop cost him. Double play ends the inning. It's a 2 2 game. A WestJet Plus fare. It's more than a seat. It's a premium experience for a smart pro. Thank you very much, Hazel. That is great advice. And boy, are the fans packed into the WestJet flight. John Gibbons had a little bit of a chat with Michael Saunders. Just a reminder, and it, probably in reference to that throw to third, got to know where you are in a game, where you are in a lineup. And Josh Donaldson, too, going to slide over and just. Giving that friendly reminder. Hey, we got Sanchez on there who's throwing bowling balls up there. We can get a double play. Just take the sure play. Just stop that runner. Keep the double play in order. Ah. Russell Martin. Oh, he had a good at bat his last time. Up a two out single to right. Now that ball off his foot. Well, there's a buzz in this building right now. Blue Jay fans are thinking, hey, Donaldson's starting to heat up. We're getting great starting pitching. Josh turned a great double play, and maybe we're going to get to 500 this weekend. And the Yankees follow the Red Sox in town. There's a buzz back. Yeah, there there is. And The fans don't get a chance to see Jose Bautista tonight, unfortunately. He's got to sit out this one game suspension. But you've got Jose swinging the bats and leading the charge offensively. You know, and Jose moved up to that leadoff spot, started the road trip in Minnesota. And it paid dividends. They went five and two, and nobody's really gotten crazy with the bats just yet. But the Orioles have Adam Jones leading off tonight, playing against the Indians, and he's already two for two. He came into this game batting 230. Jose Bautista, you can see him in a Raptors jersey. He Received news that his suspension was upheld after the hearing. And he's having a chat with our Shai Davidi on the bench prior to the game. And Bautista can't be in the clubhouse or on the bench, obviously, while he's serving his one game suspension. Oh, I know exactly where he is. Look at his jersey. <laughs> you know exactly where he is. Huh? Big basketball fan. Russell Martin draws the walk. Kevin Travis had a base hit his first time up. We haven't seen much of the Blue Jays play hit and run, but they were trying to steal a run last inning when Justin Smoke struck out. 
Saunders was at first, Donaldson at third, and Saunders took off. They might play hit and run with Travis. You know, the when you when you are talking about the Red Sox, two runs is not enough to beat the Red Sox. They they can score. So you have to have a very aggressive, I think, mindset offensively if you're the Blue Jays. Pitch away, and Travis fouls it back. You can see him talking to himself about staying through the ball. A ball than two strikes on a Blue Jays second baseman. Travis's third game since coming off the disabled list and his promotion was probably rushed a bit with the injury to Troy Tulowitzki. When Tulowitzki was pulled out of the game on Tuesday night they made the call down at AAA. Not knowing how long Tulowitzki would be out but they needed an extra infield. They needed an extra middle infielder and a guy who can swing the bat and. Gibby was saying well why not. He's been down there. We think he's had enough at bats. Off speed pitch popped up. Oh, off feathers. Jackie Bradley Jr. calls off the shortstop. Bogarts had called for it and then heard the center field. Number 11, Kevin. I catch everything to He can do everything. <laughs> <laughs> now that's funny. <laughs> He's not at the game just yet. That game's going to start in a little bit. So, what does Jose do while he's sitting out the one game suspension? He's the PR guy tonight, or the P PA guy tonight. Kevin Pilar batting with one out. There goes Martin. Hit and run is on and is pulled up to perfection. Martin is headed for third and Kevin Pilar just put the bat on the ball and Pedroia had the coverage at second. He was taken out of position by Martin starting at first. You have to stay aggressive against the Red Sox because they can swing the bat. Pilar executes the hit and run with perfection. He stays right on that pitch. Hits it on the ground. The Boston Red Sox guessed it. wrong. Watch Pedroia. He can't get around Martin on the hit and run. The ball innocently goes down into right field for a single. And the Blue Jays keep the gas pedal going. That's a thing of beauty. Six hits now for the Blue Jays. Another opposite field base hit. Carrera, he singled the left his last time up. He scored the second Blue Jay run. Just in case they're thinking about it again. I love that. I, I love the hit and run in that situation. You got your number nine hitter up. You go on the first pitch, you open up a hole on the infield, executed with perfection by the Blue Jays. Look out. That hit him. That'll load the bases. The appeal down to third was to Brian Gorman, the third base umpire, whether or not he bunted at the ball. And Gorman waved the save sign, so the bases are loaded, and the Red Sox are going to get something going in their bullpen. Maybe they're checking on that video whether or not he squared around. But the bases will be loaded now for Josh Donaldson, already two for two against Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly is thinking what do I throw him now one more time he squares around this looks like it might have been the safety squeeze but he pulls the bat back gets hit right in the thigh two at bats for Donaldson two pitches two extra base hits that brings Carl Willis to the mound for the Red Sox it was the fourth inning 
in the game here on April 8th. Same situation. Bases loaded. Josh Donaldson at the plate. Kapowi, grand slam home run. That was his second career grand slam. Boy, he's had two great at bats here tonight. A home run to deep center, an RBI double to right center. Russell Martin walked the start to inning. He went first to third on the hit and run by Kevin Pillar, and Carrera was hit by a pitch. The bases loaded for Donaldson, just one out. Played inside. Ball two. He's looking for something out over the plate. Blue Jays only have one grand slam this year. And it's Josh Donaldson. Look at those numbers with the bases loaded. Donaldson will take another line drive into the right center alley. That's liable to clear the bases. His third hit, third RBI of the ball game. A single, a double, a home run. It's only the fourth inning. 2 0 breaking ball to Donaldson with the bases loaded. No place to put him. But he's looking for that pitch out over the plate. That's what he gets. Breaking ball hits it off the end of the bat, but puts it in a good spot. He'll plate one run and he'll keep the bases loaded with that infield single. Edwin Encarnacion. A couple of ground outs so far. He got the big hit yesterday. A two run single off CC Sabathia. Nine career grand slams for double E. He had three last year. Three twenty three. Drives in Pilar with the sack fly. I'm telling you, Blue Jays will take it, but that was this close to leaving the ballpark. Edwin Encarnacion just missed that ball. It was another hanging breaking ball from Joe Kelly. Breaking ball, watch Edwin. He's all over it. He just misses it. He knows that one's not leaving the ballpark and he said you know what I came that close to hitting my 10th grand slam in my career. But you got to run in from third. That's what you wanted as a minimum. Now Michael Saunders will bat with two outs. You can see in kind of shown indicating he hit that toward the end of the bat. Michael has walked and struck out. Blue Jays four runs on seven hits off Kelly. Aaron Sanchez with a bit of breathing room now.
Josh Donaldson, he is three for three tonight. And homered in his first at bat, had an RBI double in his second at bat, and had an RBI single in his fourth at bat. And that single broke an 0 for 16 slump with runners in scoring position. So everything is on the up and up now for Donaldson's taking an upward trend. Yeah, he was talking about, he says, I just haven't felt right all year long, but maybe we're starting to see the MVP round into form. Three and one. Really, the Blue Jays haven't, as a team, hit consistently at all this year. First two months of the season, not like we've seen them in the past. There was a different air about them today around the batting cage. I agree. I agree. They were five and two on the road trip. Boston Red Hot leading the division coming into town. There was just a little bit more intense focus. Three and one to Saunders. Ball four. That'll reload the bases. This is a familiar scene for Joe Kelly in this ballpark. This is his fourth career start here at Rogers Center. He is pitching with two outs in the fourth inning. He's been charged with four runs on seven hits so far. He's now allowed 19 earned runs in this ballpark in four starts. Seven of them in that start back in April. This is the guy who came in here. 10 consecutive decisions he has won. He hasn't lost since last July the 22nd. Troy Tulowitzki caught looking his first two times up. Matt Barnes, a right hander, loosening up. I think John Farrell, he doesn't want to go to his bullpen very early. Clay Buckholtz got knocked out early yesterday. I had to cover a lot of innings and Yesterday's ball game. He's hoping for Kelly to go a little bit deeper. He's already thrown 78 pitches, and we're only in the fourth inning. Breaking ball down and away. Ball on the strike. Troy Chulowitzki has taken two called strike threes here so far tonight. Got a five game hit streak. Oh, I like how he swung at that first pitch aggressively. Last time up, first pitch fastball was right down the middle, like he was looking for something else. Fouled straight back. Vasquez is going to take a trip to the mound here. Blue Jays with a chance to bust the door wide open here. They've scored two this inning. They have a 4 2 lead. And the bases are loaded. Tulowitzki, the eighth Blue Jay to bat this inning. This inning began with a leadoff walk and then a one out hit and run. Set the whole inning up, didn't it? First and third. Kelly in his last start here in the fourth inning, he said he just lost his mechanics, especially when he was out of the stretch. And when he was out of the stretch with Pilar at first base and Martin over at third base, he hit Carrera and gave up another hit and then another walk. This has been a carbon copy of that game that we saw back here in April. They've had him on the ropes all night. Now he's lost the feel of that slider just like the last start. He was great his last game against the Indians. Six and two thirds, no hits, and he was on a pitch count, and he was nearing that, and he said, I knew that. So he was throwing a lot of fastballs, gave up the double to your rebay, and then was out of the ball game. Not so tonight. Josh Donaldson reached him. Second batter of the game. 
homered against him, and he's been struggling ever since. Two balls and two strikes, two outs. Everything is up. Kulowitzki is staying alive, getting that yeah. high fastball. I think that's by design by Joe Kelly right there. The high fastball to Tulowitzki. He's saying, hey, I don't think you can catch up to it. And Troy keeps fouling it straight back. Lewitsky strikes out. Blue Jays leave the bases loaded, but they score two to take a 4 2 lead. Now, time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. Jay Shop is Canada's largest and only official team shop for your Toronto Blue Jays. New 2016 authentic jersey with 40th season sleeve patch available now. Get yours today at jshop.ca. Lots of choices at Jay Shop. You have all different styles of hats, jerseys, t-shirts. Get your favorite player's name on the back. I suspect we will see a lot of blue here this weekend. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. Now, Blue Jays are going to have a 40th season tribute on Sunday, bringing back some of the best offensive players, 10 of them, in fact. And we'll have a pregame ceremony honoring the 40th season for the Blue Jays. We're going to have John Mayberry, Ernie Witt. Lloyd Mosby, Willie Upshaw, Jesse Barfield, Tony Fernandez. I saw Jose Cruz Jr. today down on the field. He said he was in town for that on Sunday. Fly ball to right. Carrera back makes the catch and retires the catcher, Christian Vasquez. The all new Honda Civic now available with Turbo. The 2016 North American Car of the Year. Friday night baseball and Rogers Center is a buzz. The Red Sox are in town and the Blue Jays have a 4 2 lead. Blake Swihart started the season as a catcher for the Red Sox. That didn't go well. They sent him back to Triple A, played him in the outfield, and now he's going to play left field quite a bit. He did not sign as a catcher. He signed as an outfielder. He can play some infield. And I think before it's all said and done, he's an outstanding athlete. Outstanding athlete. When it's all said and done, he's going to be a very valuable player, I think, for the Red Sox because he's so versatile. He can really run. Mm -hmm. And he's very athletic, as you mentioned. He's made a pretty smooth transition to left. 
He's a switch hitter. He can hit. And if you can play the outfield. The infield if you have to. And you're a catcher. How valuable is that? A third string catcher. Who can play all those other positions? An emergency type of catcher, yeah. yeah. Came right back with the curveball, and Sanchez picks up another strikeout. That's four strikeouts for the big righty. You know what you can't do? I think against the Red Sox, because they're so good, you can't fall into patterns, and Aaron Sanchez isn't doing that. He's using his fastball occasionally, and now he goes to the curveball to strike out Blake Swihart. We haven't seen too many change-ups from him, so he might be introducing that as they start to make their way through the lineup for the third time. Russell told me during batting practice that he's just going to go with what he sees from Sanchez. If the fastball curveball combination are working, he's going to stick with that. That's a fair ball. Long throw, plenty of time. Sanchez breezes through the fifth. Three up, three down, no problem. Blue Jays will bat leading 4 2, bottom of the fifth. leagues and check out the Blue Jays Acura Luxury Suites for a business meeting and a baseball game. Our account executives will find the package that best suits your needs. 416-341-1635 or bluejays.com slash luxury suites. Great opportunity to entertain some guests and have a good time at the ballpark. There's going to be a lot of great games coming up. Two more games with the Red Sox and then three with the Yankees Monday Tuesday Wednesday and then the Blue Jays have an off day on Thursday before they meet these same Red Sox back in Boston. Justin Smoke try to get something going here in the fifth. Smoke has gone down swinging twice so far tonight. Joe Kelly is throwing as hard as he is. You just got to time him up, let him supply all the power. Smoke hit his last home run against Texas on the 14th. And he got every bit of that one. He's one of the best low ball hitters in baseball. And that pitch looked like it was low right in his swing path, and he crushed it. What a beautiful sound for hitters when you square up a baseball and you have that 
ringing in your ears. He's hitting 333 on low pitches, and look at this one right down there, and he goes and gets it and golfs it out of here. That sound to make pitchers flinch. For smoke, home run number four, RBI number 12. Second home run of the night for the Blue Jays. Donaldson went deep in his first at bat. Now smoke. Russell Martin's been on base twice. He singled and walked. He scored the third Blue Jays run of the night. That's a great feeling, isn't it? When you hit a ball like that. You can get right into that home run trot. Now especially after you had two strikeouts to start tonight. It just takes one swing of the bat to erase the memories yeah. of those two at bats. Martin strikes out. That's eight strikeouts for Joe Kelly. But he's on the wrong side of a 5 2 ball game. Strikeouts are great. They run those pitch counts up, though. Ground ball to Bogarts. He has it, takes his time, and goes to first to retire Nevin Travis. Bogarts is such a good player. He's only made one error this year at shortstop. He's having an MVP caliber start to his season for what he brings at the plate, what he brings at shortstop, a very pivotal position, obviously, and hitting in the third spot in the order. He is tied for the best fielding percentage in the American League with Jose Iglesias from the Detroit Tigers. Shortstop has become an offensive position, if you ask me. Again. Again. Yeah. There for a while, of course, with Nomar Garcia Parra and Cal. Derek Jeter and Jeter. A Rod. Tulowitzki early Tula. in his career was a big time offensive player. Now they have some of the best young players coming in. Kevin Pillar golfs with him to left. He is headed for second. He better hurry. Kevin Pillar, his second hit of the night. His 14th double of the season. Not a bad time to try and take a shot at getting yourself into scoring position. Blake Swihart played that ball perfectly off the wall. It was hit so hard by Pillar. But the throw from Swihart is offline. Breaking ball in the inner half, and Pilar was telling me earlier today, he said, I'm looking for that ball inside there. Gets it. The throw is in plenty of time, but it's offline. That allows Kevin Pilar to slide in with another extra base hit for the Blue Jays, an aggressive slide. Another rough outing for Joe Kelly here in Rogers Center. He leaves with two outs here in the fifth, down by three. Matt Barnes into the game.
Chris Archer continues to have problems, but all three runs he's given up tonight are unearned runs as he and Taylor Matter have both committed errors. Mm. Matt Barnes will come in and pick up Joe Kelly. Air the numbers for Barnes in 19 games this year. 282 earned run average. Big fastball from the former number one draft pick out of UConn in 2011. Red Sox wanted some power in that bullpen, and Matt Barnes will supply that. Good fastball and a good breaking ball. Said Kiel Carrera, the right fielder, has gone one for two. He was hit by a pitch his last time up. And that keyed the two run inning as that loaded the bases. Pilar in second with the two out double. Ripped to first base. Shaw has it. Carrera hit it hard, but right to the first baseman, the Blue Jays. Get a run. Justin Smoke leads off the inning with a long home run into the second deck in right. His fourth of the season, second of the night for the Blue Jays. Presented by the all-new Honda Civic, now available with Turbo, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. Aaron Sanchez, through five innings, has allowed just three hits and one earned run. Red Sox had an unearned run. Pedroia goes after the first pitch and lifts a lazy fly ball to left. One pitch, one out here in the sixth. You know, you were talking last inning about Russell Martin working with Aaron Sanchez and whatever's working. We're going to stick with it. His last start against the Minnesota Twins, you know what was working? His fastball. He threw it 84% of the time in that start, seven innings against Minnesota. Just kept throwing it. They weren't hitting it. So why change? Russell knows he's got a much different lineup to work through tonight with the Red Sox in town. Xander Bogarts extended his hit streak to 20 straight games with a single in the fourth. One thing I really like about Aaron Sanchez, well, there are a lot of things I like about Aaron Sanchez, but for a young guy, he pitches to the scoreboard very well. By that, we mean that he understands he's got a three run lead now, and all he's trying to do is retire one batter at a time. Don't try to strike everybody out, just make good quality pitches. Breaking ball, tap back to the mound. Bogarts has had his problems with Sanchez's curveball tonight. He struck him out his first time up, and that's time weekly back to the mound. You know, the more I watch Aaron Sanchez, he reminds me a lot of Garrett Richards of the Los Angeles Angels. 
Strong, can't throw a ball straight, good curveball, just a bulldog on the mound. And Sanchez is making his name, a name for himself as a starter. Travis Shaw, he has reached base twice. He reached on the throwing there by Troy Tulowitzki in the second and came around to score the first Red Sox run. That tied it up at 1 1, top second. He singled to left in his second at bat and was stranded. <laughs> One and two. Yes, he did. Brian Gorman, the crew chief down at third, rings up Shaw. Aaron Sanchez has retired seven straight. Drive of the game is brought to you by the all-new Honda Civic, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. Josh Donaldson homered last Sunday in his first at bat in Minnesota, and tonight his first at bat results in this. The dead center field one more time. It's the Blue Jays their first run of the night. It is also our drive of the game. Josh Donaldson three for three. Needs a triple for the cycle. The Blue Jays have not had a batter hit for the cycle since 2001. Jeff Fry was the last Blue Jay to hit for the cycle. Josh has had one four hit game this season. That came in the extra inning game in San Francisco. Donaldson went four for six in that game. The Blue Jays lost that game in the 13th. Where is there a triple out there for Josh? Maybe down the right field line? What it's a tough outfield to get a triple yes. against. Very, very tough. The players and the ballpark. Meaning there's not a lot of nooks and crannies where the ball can roll around or escape. Not like Triples Alley at Fenway Park. Plus the outfielders here are very athletic very quick to get to the ball very quickly and get the ball back in. The ball and two strikes. Well sometimes when you come to the ball game you really want a baseball. And that guy really wanted a baseball. He brought his glove. 
He had to navigate around the seats and the aisle and the fans. And he didn't get it. Ah, swing and a miss. <laughs> <laughs> two balls and two strikes to Josh Donaldson. This is just his second three hit game of the season. He also had a three hit game April 23rd right here against his former team the Oakland A's in a 9 3 win. That went in Carnacion had a sack fly his last time up. Donaldson strikes out. That's the ninth strikeout for the Blue Jays tonight. One down in the six. Edwin and Connor Jones had two good at bats tonight. Sack fly in the fourth, of course, and then he had that ground ball to the right side of the infield in the third inning, and that led to a run. Center Bradley on the move at the wall makes the catch. And Carnacion made a bid for extra bases. This Blue Jays Rogers 4K broadcast is powered by the Samsung 4K SUHD TV. You were talking earlier about the sound that the ball makes when Justin Smoke hit that home run. That sound off the bat of Edwin Encarnacion just wasn't as solid, was it? No, it just didn't have that clear, distinctive ring crack of the bat. And if it doesn't go out of the ballpark, there's a good chance that that guy in center field is going to catch it. You know, the American League East is full of great center fielders. You've got Pilar here. You got Kiermaier down in Tampa. Adam Jones and. In Baltimore, Ellsbury in New York, and Jackie Bradley Jr. in center field. Yeah, he's very good. And when he first came up to the Red Sox, he was noted more for his defensive skills than he was for his hitting. Now that things have kind of reversed, he's the, a complete player. The Kevin offense, Pilar, of course, is terrific. The offense has caught up with the defense, if you will, with Jackie Bradley. Michael Saunders has struck out and walked twice tonight. Michael was one for 11 in the series against the Yankees with that one hit was a home run. His home run came on Wednesday against Jason Shreve lefty on lefty fifth time Saunders has taken a left hander deep this season. Gets himself into another good hitters count right here. Three one. Ball four. Third walk of the night for Saunders. So Troy Tulowitzki has had a tough start to his night. Three strikeouts. Looking twice, swinging his last time up in the fourth. Swing early. Michael Saunders has walked three straight times. Two has got a chance to drive him in from first. Two outs. Blue Jays lead it five to two.
to the wrist cage, popped to his feet, and he doesn't want any more attention. Very frightening any time a guy gets hit up around the neck or head. Yeah, especially when you throw as hard as Matt Barnes throws. That fastball just got away from Barnes and hit Tulowitzki. Troy did the right thing. Watch him turn away from this pitch. Turn the front shoulder and takes it right off the of the arm, that shoulder area. But that's scary. That thing gets on you very quickly. Now he did take his hands out of harm's way, turned his shoulder into it, took it on the back of that left arm. Justin Smoke with a long home run, his last time up. Good hack at that pitch. Ooh, that looked like he was sitting on a breaking ball. The way he approached that one. Carrera got hit by a pitch in the fourth from Joe Kelly, and now Tulowitzki gets hit by a pitch here in the sixth. And obviously Tulowitzki with three strikeouts, no intent whatsoever. Just got away from him. Oh, and one to smoke. 98 you see that 98 miles an hour. His fastball is sitting at a career high 97 98 miles an hour since they transitioned him into the bullpen he's throwing hard. Everything away from smoke in this at bat. The Red Sox infield three infielders on the first base side of second while the outfield is slightly opposite. Pulls the ground balls hits the ball in the air the opposite way the other way. He hit that last ball in the air to the pool side yeah. and deep somebody in the stands in the second deck caught it. Breaking ball smoke strikes out the Blue Jays will strand a pair. We'll go to the seventh. The Blue Jays have a 5 2 lead. Ramirez, Bradley Jr., and Hernandez to face Sanchez. Two runs on three hits tonight against the Boston Red Sox. They're one of the AL East teams that Aaron has pitched so well against. The American League East lineups are so deep and they're so power packed. These stats really tell the story for Sanchez. He's made 10 starts in his career versus the American League East, and his earned run average is under three. Opponents are barely hitting over 200 against Aaron. You're talking about the Red Sox, one of the best hitting teams in all of baseball. Baltimore Orioles always have a power-packed team. 
Tampa Bay they're they're always very tough to to deal with and of course New York Yankees so Aaron just shows you the type of stuff that he possesses to go through these lineups Aaron is three and one against Boston as we mentioned earlier this is his fourth career start his 12th appearance against the Red Sox coming into this game Boston had a 181 batting average against Aaron Sanchez and this is one of the best hitting teams in baseball absolutely and, and think about the ballparks that you're pitching in in the American League East they're all band boxes every one of them. You know there was such a controversy in the spring as to whether or not Aaron Sanchez was worthy of a spot in the rotation. I think he's answered all the critics. He's gone four and a third one time. That was here against Oakland. And he walks Ramirez to start the seventh. Save during Canada's Caller Expert Sale. Only at Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. The roof is open and the CN Tower next door to Rogers Center. That's Robbie Ross Jr., the lefty loosening up. Matt Barnes has got an inning and a third. Breaking ball in the dirt. Russell Martin's going to ask for a new baseball and have a little visit with Sanchez here as yeah. he walked Ramirez to start the inning. That one didn't have any strikes in it. He hasn't thrown one this inning. And that got John Gibbons up off of his seat. Aaron hasn't won a game here at home this year. He's made three starts, hasn't won a game here. His ERA is up over five. For comparison's sake, he's 4 0 with a 238 earned run average and six road starts. He Misses was, with that pitch. He was telling me in Minnesota, he says, I can't wait to get back to Rogers Center when they open up the dome because he feels like that ball really moved more when the dome is open. And I think he's right. He's been outstanding tonight. As long as he thinks. That's the reason he's right. <laughs> <laughs> well you get more air movement right that's going to make your ball move just a little bit more. There's a line drive to base hit to left field for Jackie Bradley Junior. Just the fourth hit of the ball game. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority. Of the Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Joe Biagini starts to loosen up quickly for the Blue Jays. A walk and a base hit here in the seventh. It is a 5 2 lead for the Blue Jays, but they have stranded 10 men on base and have gotten just one hit in eight at bats with runners in scoring position. I mean, this could be yes. a lopsided affair right now, but Marco Hernandez represents the tying run. 5 to 2 is nice, but 10 runners left on base through six innings. Missing that key base hit for the Jays. They've left the bases loaded once already. Little chopper out in front of home. They'll go to first. Sanchez goes to first. He thought about it. He, he he looked back at second base and he thought about going to second base and then said, you know what, I've got to take the shore out over at first. And that's the last thing you want to see is him airmailing the ball into center field on a comebacker like that. Well, he made a throwing air to second earlier in the season and that cost him, but right there. You're right. He had his body in a position where maybe he was thinking about going to second, but then it just wasn't hit hard enough. Christian Vasquez, the catcher, has grounded out and flied out in his two plate appearances tonight. Ramirez at third, Jackie Bradley Jr. at second. Just four hits and 29 at bats for the Red Sox catcher with runners in scoring position. Two. 
That was a very patient delivery with that curveball. He rushes himself, he says, at times, and the, the arm drags just a little bit, and he just doesn't have a feel for the curveball. He says, I got to just remind myself, stay on top, release the ball out in front, and that's when I'll get my best movement on my curveball. Up the middle, base hit, a run is in. Here comes Bradley Jr. And Vasquez has driven in two runs. Sanchez gives up the base hit, and now there's a delay in the action as there's been a fan that has come on the field, and that's why the players are standing around looking. But Vasquez drives in RBIs number seven and eight for him this season and just like that it's a one run game. And that'll bring Pete Walker out to the mound to talk to Aaron. Aaron almost got that comeback. It was another good curveball to Vasquez. And Aaron reached for it and just missed it. You can see how upset he is with himself. You know, he makes that play. There's still runners at second and third. Watch this one right back through the middle. Ramirez scores. Jackie Bradley right behind him. And it's another one then game. Curveball was up a bit. It took one hop on the turf, bounced over Sanchez's glove into center. But once again, you can say this time and time again, leadoff walks will kill you. Mm. And he walked Hanley Ramirez, and then Bradley Jr. got a single and it's a one run game we mentioned the Blue Jays have stranded 10 Lake Swihart has struck out twice Red Sox have scored four runs on five hits What the cash runners, don't they? Junichi Tozawa loosening up for Boston as they had Robbie Ross up. That's interesting, isn't they were it? Down by three. Now they get to within one. They go to a different pitcher. Yeah, he just got up and he just started throwing after that hit by Vasquez. The Red Sox has a team batting 298 with runners in scoring positions, second in the American League. And that's the big difference with the Blue Jays season and the Red Sox. They have been delivering in the clutch. You know what they do so well? They hit well the breaking ball. They've got one of the best averages in baseball off the breaking ball. And that was another example of it that curveball to Vasquez. Christian Vasquez just asked for time. I think he was thinking there might be a sign here. I don't believe that's the case. One and two to Swihart. Now Sanchez has thrown 98 pitches. First run he allowed tonight was an unearned run because of the air by Tudowitzki. Going to come inside right here with a fastball. Fouled off by Swagger. This is the 20th game the Red Sox have played against the American League East. For the Blue Jays, it's their 27th game. Breaking ball foul. For the Blue Jays, a game under 500 and have had a tough schedule to start the season. Yeah, they have. It seems like they've lived in the American League East all season, doesn't it? We've seen it up the Red Sox. Yankees, Baltimore, Tampa. We played them in three series already. 
one hundred pitches for Sanchez. Two and two. Still got plenty in the tank. That last pitch was 96 miles an hour. You know John Gibbons wants him to get through this inning right here. Get something on the ground. Well you know why he wants him to get through this inning because the Blue Jays bullpen hasn't done a very good job of stranding inherited runners. That's right. So he would just as soon give his bullpen a clean inning to start. That's why he's hopeful that Aaron can get out of this inning. Swihart's putting up a battle. He doesn't want to play along. Two and two, one out. He strikes out. He waved that pitch up and away. Three Very strikeouts for Swihart tonight. Very defensive swing that time for Swihart. He might have been looking for something off speed, then recognize this fastball. Look at the movement that he gets with it in a very defensive swing to finish off that at bat. Well John Gibbons after the strikeout has gone to the mound. He's going to take the ball from Aaron Sanchez. Aaron will leave six and two thirds. He leaves with the lead. Another good start for Aaron Sanchez. Joe Biagini will come on with a man at first. Rookie Betts will be the batter. Sanchez had great stuff tonight. He's pitching against the best hitting ball club in the American League. He leaves with a 5 4 lead, turns it over to Joe Biagini. What a season the rookie's putting together through his first 14 games. Take a look at that earn run average 054. His fastball cutter curveball combination have been great. Biagini. Has done a terrific job. He's retired 11 of 14 first batters he's faced. He is pitching in more prominent roles now for the Blue Jays. The deeper we get into this season, he is showing that he belongs. His numbers bear that out. So, John Gibbons, who's always been a manager who goes with a hot hand. He's using be a genie later in ball games. Curveball upstairs. The Blue Jays have really pitched Betts tough so far this season. He's three for 33 for the season against the Blue Jays. He's coming off of a year last year where he had 28 hits against the Blue Jays, the most of any opponent. Two and two.
Aaron Sanchez needs a pick me up. Line drive to center. That's going to hang up for Pilar. Biagini comes in and strands the base runner. Aaron Sanchez still has the lead. The Blue Jays are up five to four. Russell Martin been on base twice tonight. Devin Travis has a base hit. Kevin Pilar has two. Five four Blue Jays. In this series will both be afternoon games. Rick Corr set off to a great start to his season at 7-2. He'll go up against Marcus Stroman. He too with a nice record at 5-1. Then how about the pitching matchup on Sunday? David Price, 7-1. Elevated ERA, still 7-1. R.A. Dickey has pitched much better than that 2-6 may indicate. And David Price's last outing, he made a mechanical adjustment and was outstanding in winning that ball game. There is the former Blue Jay. He said his hellos to everybody today. Ari Dickey, you're right, has been pitching great baseball. Just hasn't had much to show for it. Blue Jays haven't been able to score many runs for him. It says Janichi Tozawa. He'll be the third Red Sox pitcher to work at Barnes. Goes an inning in a third. Robbie Ross Jr. was up throwing, and then the Red Sox score a couple of runs. So Tozawa comes in. There are his numbers. 189 for righties, 143 for lefties, a whip under one. His fastball splitter combination is working again. He is also working on eight straight scoreless appearances for the Red Sox. Tazao is a very good pitcher, but for some reason the Blue Jays have his number. For his career, the Jays have hit 339 against him. That's over a span of 30 games. 30 games, and he's 0 for 5 in save opportunities versus Toronto. And after that much adversity, you got to believe it's in Tozawa's head. In 30 games, he's given up nine home runs to the Blue Jays. 26 career home runs allowed for Tozawa, nine of them to the Blue Jays. Russell Martin with a 2 0 count. Ooh, a high strike. And Russell voiced his displeasure to the home plate umpire, Quinn Wolcott. Nice pitch to hit there. Nice pitch to hit fastball 92 miles an hour down the middle. Now Tazawa is probably going to go to his bag of tricks. Martin just one for six against Tazawa.
put her in the dirt. Full count. Devin Travis is on deck. Blue Jays led it five to two. Red Sox got two runs on the two run single by Christian Vasquez. Top of this inning. High and deep to left. Swihart back. He's got room. He makes the catch in front of the 375 mark. One down. The all new Honda Civic now available with turbo. The 2016 North American Car of the Year. Beautiful evening here at Rogers Center. The roof is open for the first time this season. Great crowd on hand, and it's been a heck of a ball game. Blue Jays have a 5 4 lead. Devin Travis singled his first time up. He's one for three on the night. Expect every game to be like this. I think <laughs> on this whole home stand. You know how important it is to play within your division. In these two teams, the Red Sox and the Blue Jays, they don't give an inch. I mean, they come and battle each other. Every game is like this. This is the eighth game already between these two teams, and the Red Sox have won four of the seven so far. Every game is close. Everything, every game, it seems like it comes down to like one play for either team that separates a win from a loss. Isn't that the tenor of the American League East? That's exactly <laughs> right. I mean, they go at it. Now back to the screen. Toronto is 12 and 14 against the East. Boston is 10 and 9 against the East. You look at the rest of the division. New York 7 and 11. Tampa Bay 11 and 10. <laughs> it's a meat grinder. How about Baltimore? Baltimore, they're 9 and 5. 9 and 5. They've just played 14 games. 0 2 to Travis. But you know you, you play each other so many times in baseball now within your division and over the years you, you become very familiar with each other. You know what this guy throws you know what he wants to throw in the situation has always got the great splitter on and on and on and that's why the games are so close everybody so familiar with each other. Travis strikes out two down. Eleventh strikeout tonight by Red Sox pitching. Joe Kelly got eight. Barnes two. And Tazana that's his first one. Who is that? A little Strowman hairdo there, <laughs> young fan. Mini Stro. <laughs> Wonder how long it took his. Mom to give in to that. <laughs> Come on, Mom. <laughs> Kevin Pilar's had a two hit game, goes after the first pitch and pops it up. Shallow right field. Right fielder, Mookie Betts calls for it, makes the catch, quick inning for Tazawa. Three up, three down, including a strikeout. Joe Biagini back to start.
are continuing. Night. He doubled and singled. He is two for four on the night. We go to the eighth inning, and Joe Biagini is back to start the eighth inning. He came in with a man on and got Mookie Betts to line out to end the inning. So now he'll work to Pedroia, Bogarts, and Sean. David Ortiz did not start in this game. He is on the bench for the Red Sox, and he is really swinging it. You know, uh, we think alike because I was thinking the exact same thing. I was like, okay, if David Ortiz would the would be pinch hitting, who would he pinch hit for? Probably Hernandez, the third baseman who got the start tonight. Can pinch hit for the catcher, Vasquez. He can pinch hit mm -hmm. for Swihart. He can pinch hit for anybody in the bottom third. Seven, eight, nine. Yep. He's not going to pinch hit for those first six. Ball in a strike to Dustin Pedroia. 0 for 3. Pedroia came into this game with a 20 game hit streak against the Blue Jays. Put that average up over 300 again. He's missed a lot of time over the last few years with leg injuries. High pitch hit to center field. Long run for Pilar and Saunders. They cross their wires and the ball falls. Saunders looked over at Pilar. Pilar had already peeled off, and that ball dropped safely between Saunders and Pilar. But that looked like a can of corn to the left fielder. It looked like Michael Saunders was going to go over there and make the catch. Keep keep an eye on Kevin Pilar. He's playing in right center field. Now watch him peel off. And then Saunders at the last second recognizes that his center fielder was nowhere near that ball. And it falls in harmlessly for a leadoff double on Pedroia. Wow, what a gift. A terrific gift for the Red Sox. Unfortunate for the Blue Jays. Pedroia extends his hit streak with that blue double. Xander Bogarts, he goes after the first pitch and hits this one into the alley. Saunders calls for this almost a carbon copy of where that last ball was. Pedroia tags and advances to third. That was the exact same fly ball, the same everything. The time Michael Saunders took advantage of that and took control. But now Pedroia is at third base representing the tie and run. So the infield has to come in. Travis Shaw one for three tonight. He scored a run. Joe Biagini. Blue Jays have just one left hander in their bullpen, Chad Gerano. This situation screams for a left handed reliever right here. Aaron Loop is close, but he hasn't been called up from the minors yet. Still on a Rehab trying to get back to the big leagues, but they say he's close. He's not close enough tonight. Not tonight. This is Joe Biagini's inning right here. Travis Shaw, even though it's early in his career. He has really worn out the Blue Jays. 367 coming into this game for his career versus Toronto. Ball in the strike. Fastball fouled out of play. The Red Sox are somewhat familiar with Biagini. This is his fourth appearance, a total of four innings coming into this outing. Chili Davis was prepared to talk to his hitters about Biagini. They saw him, of course. In Fenway, and they all complimented the youngster for his stuff. One and two, one out. Curveball in play, off the glove, past both Smoke and Travis, and the game is tied. Dustin Bajoya comes in. Oh, yeah. 
And it's a 5 5 game. And now, how about those 10 stranded runners for the Blue Jays? You know what always comes back to haunt you when you've got opportunities to score runs. And unfortunately for the Blue Jays, they had an error earlier in this game that led to an unearned run, and then that play in left field cost him the run. Pedroia was watching that play. I don't think he was coming. He was making that ball go through, but unfortunately for the Blue Jays, it's off of smoke. And then it's off of Travis. Pedroia was not breaking on contact for sure. One out now, Hanley Ramirez. They charged smoke with an air at first. His first air of the season. Boy, that's a tough air. Yeah, I think so too. He had a long way to go to his right. And he was in shallow, playing on the edge of the turf. Two and out. Oh. Hanley Ramirez is one for two tonight. And he has had a very productive night at the plate. He had a big at bat in the second. Moved the runner over to third base and he came in to score on a ground ball. And then he had an RBI single in the fourth. He Three. walked and scored in the seventh. Three very productive at bats. You just described them. His walk last inning, leadoff walk, he came around to score. Jeannie threw him a little cutter. Well, Sanchez will be saddled with a no decision. That's unfortunate because Aaron pitched great. Gave up three earned runs pitching into the seventh inning to go along with six K's, and he's going to pick up a, a no decision. Piagini charged with his first blown save. Could be distracting if they get it in center field. And they've got their phones out for sure. Bound ball to Lewitsky. Travis, first base, double play. So it's a 5 5 game as we head to the bottom of the eighth. Now, time for Blue Jay Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zod in the Samsung Broadcast Studio.
Care events throughout the season. For a list of all Jays Care events during the 2016 season, visit www.jayscare.com. Thank you very much, Hazel May. We got a 5-5 game as the Red Sox have scored two in the seventh and one in the eighth. And now Koji Uhara, the former closer for the Red Sox, has become the eighth inning guy. And he hasn't lost a beat. He is throwing very well once again. 350 earned run average in his 19 games. He offers a different look, I think, out of that bullpen for the Boston Red Sox. They've got some hard throwers in Kimbrell and Barnes and Embry, and now they bring in Uohara, who barely throws about 88, maybe 87 miles an hour, but he's got an outstanding splitter. The Red Sox bullpen has an ERA of 301, their fifth in the American League. Run by Carrera. That's going to be a base hit. Carrera with a terrific bunt reaches first a leadoff single, his second hit of the ball game. Zucchio will use that bunt to his advantage. He's going to try and pick on the third baseman, Marco Fernandez. What a perfect bunt. Hits it off the end of the bat, deadens it out in front of home plate. I think if Vasquez gets to this ball, he makes this play such a superior defender, but it's bunted hard enough that Uohara's got to deal with it. And when he reaches down with his bare hand, he misses it. And that's all that Carrera needed to get the first base. Josh Donaldson has had a big night at the plate. He is homer doubled single in his first three at bats. He struck out in the sixth. He's three for four. He's driven in three of the Blue Jays' five runs. Double barrel action for the Blue Jays. The closer Roberto Osuna alongside Gavin Floyd. One's in if they take the lead. One's in if it remains tied. Uahara looking in for the sign. It's a 1-1 count. The scorekeeper has made a scoring change. Travis Shaw is credited with a base hit and an RBI. Top of this inning, it was a ball off the glove of Justin Smoke that went into right field. Donaldson is 0 for 8 against Koji Uehara. <laughs> he got all of that, but you're right, just a little bit out in front on that off speed pitch. His fastball isn't what it used to be. So Donaldson just a little bit out in front. Nice can... save by that fan. He almost lost that foul ball, but he had a second chance. One and two. Carrera at first. Donaldson staying on that pitch and stays alive. With Uehara, because he doesn't throw 95 plus, you can wait back as long as possible. Try and pick up that splitter that he has. He'll throw it with two strikes. Wait back, and you can still be quick. Still pull. Savi signed from the catcher fastball and then he wanted it up but it was nowhere close. Interesting move by Vasquez as he tapped the dirt on the inside maybe Making Donaldson think that he was sliding to the inside for an inside pitch. He's done that a couple of times tonight. Watch his glove just tap the ground. And as a hitter, you hear that. You think he's moving over there, so you look inside, but that's a fastball away. Also, see him tap the ground out in front of home plate, thinking it was a breaking ball, and they've thrown a high fastball tonight. 2 2. 
Swing and a drive to right. Deep to right field. Bats at the track. At the wall. Home run, Josh Donaldson. Have a night, J.D. You have to keep scoring runs. And who better than Josh Donaldson? What a night for the MVP. His first multi home run game of the season. And it couldn't come at a better time. You just had a feeling that he was going to come up with another big base hit. He was on everything that Ua Hall was throwing. This time he just squeaks it over the fence in right field. His second four hit game of the season. Two homers, a double, and a single. He's driven home five. Five RBIs, a season high for Donaldson. He told us earlier this week he's surprised at the numbers he's put up given the fact he doesn't feel great. Just doesn't feel great. Well, tonight he looks great. Four knocks and five ribbies. Ross Adkins hasn't seen this type of offense very often this season. Popped up third baseman Hernandez moves underneath it. One out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Thank you very much, Jamie. And in that game, Manny Machado, four for four. 324 average. These Mets Donaldson in the hits, but not the damage. How many strikeouts does Baltimore have tonight? Did you see their series against the Astros? Yikes. 52 strikeouts in three games. That's a record for a three game series. They've only struck out five times tonight. They have 13 hits. Adam Jones has three from the leadoff spot. That's the second time this year that a record been broken in most strikeouts in a series. One man standing for the Blue Jays in the bullpen. Roberto Osuna picked up save number 10 yesterday in New York. Uahara strikes out Saunders. Save during Canada's Caller Expert Sale. Only at Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Well, the roof is open and the CN Tower standing guard high atop the Lord Rogers Center. 46,470 here in attendance for the first game of this three game series. And they have been entertained tonight. Thanks to Josh Donaldson. <laughs> what a game. Troy Chulewitzki got hit by a pitch his last time up by Matt Barnes right up around the shoulder area. Got hit in the back of the left arm. Very frightening at bat. He has struck out in his three other plate appearances tonight. Josh Donaldson. What a night. There's that splitter to the whiskey strikes out that ends the inning but it's all Josh Donaldson Osuna prepared going after his 11th save because of Josh Donaldson's second home run of the night a shot to right he has driven in five he is on fire.
fans here in Toronto at Rogers Center and that young fan has a big Josh Donaldson hit and Josh Donaldson has put on quite a show tonight and he now looks to Roberto Osuna to pick up the save it would be his 11th of the season three days in a row for Osuna trying to nail this one down this is his 22nd game already this year 10 for 11 in saves he has thrown 21 innings look at those batting averages nothing Good fastball slider and changeup as he gets set for the ninth. Roberto threw 11 pitches on Wednesday, 15 more on Thursday afternoon. This is his third appearance in a row, and he is really throwing the ball well lately. Jackie Bradley Jr. to lead things off, and Osuna misses with the first fastball. Bradley has an RBI. It was a ground out in the second. He walked in the fourth and singled and scored in the seventh. <laughs> Roberto had a chance to visit with his father, Roberto Sr., down in Fort Worth when the Blue Jays were playing the Rangers, and they sat up and talked about pitching. There's a great changeup. And the one thing Roberto said his dad told him is you've got to get on top of your slider more and that slider has really become a good pitch. For it him. really has and he knows when to use it also. Fly ball to right Carrera over near the foul line gets there one down. Now for a preview of what's coming up on Sportsnet Central here's Ken and Ivanka. Thank you very much Ken that's coming up right after this ball game and this has been a heck of a ball game we're sort of trying to wrap things up Joe Biagini is the pitcher of record for the Blue Jays. You were just talking about the, the slider the at bat he had against Alex Rodriguez yesterday. They kept calling for the slider kept shaking him off using his fastball and. He wasn't catching up to it until he got to three and two. Then he threw him a slider. I mean, he's just so far advanced, I think. On top of great stuff, he's got a great mind for pitching. And then after he struck out Alex Rodriguez, he called for time and threw the ball out of play. And I asked him about that. He said, yeah, it was my hundredth strikeout. But my little brother had asked me in the offseason if I could have his 100th strikeout baseball. And that's what he was thinking about. That's what I mean about having a mind for pitching and always having an idea. Change up. Tap back to the mound. Two down. This is a big at bat, obviously, because. The Blue Jays are up by two. You want to keep this guy off base because if he reaches, David Ortiz is going to hit. You know he is lurking somewhere. Christian Vasquez, strike one. Vasquez had a two run single off Sanchez in the sun. Ortiz keeping a close eye on Osuna. Roberto is so aware what the score is, who's at the plate, who's on the bench, how to get him out. Two and two.
The Blue Jays trying to get to 500. A win here would be 25 and 25. Hit in the air. Smoke has room. That's the ball game. Roberto Osuna picks up save number 11. Thanks to Josh Donaldson's big offensive night. The third baseman hit like an MVP tonight. Yes, he did. He homered his first step bat and he homered it in his last step bat. In between, he had a double and another infield hit. Blue Jays take the first game in this series, all important series, against the Boston Red Sox. Aaron Sanchez was outstanding tonight. Unfortunately, he'll get a no decision, but the Blue Jays come away with the win. The Jays score seven runs on 11 hits, take the opener. They pound out three home runs. We'll be back at it tomorrow afternoon. Thanks for watching. Here's Sportsnet Central. Take it away, Ken and Ivanka.